NASA's deep space missions demand reliable power to enable rigorous scientific tasks under the harshest conditions. The general purpose heat source module, fueled by plutonium-238, is the essential building block for radioisotope power systems provided by DOE to NASA. From 1977 to 83, the Savannah River site manufactured DOE's iridium-clad PU-238 fuel pellets in a series of hot cells and shielded glove boxes. The blast-resistant 235F plutonium fuel form, or PUFF facility, was shut down in the mid-1980s. Based on assays, there is still unrecovered PU-238 in the PUFF cells, recognizing that the remaining material at risk, or MAR, would exceed the DOE standard for dose in a worst-case accident. The 235F risk reduction team was assembled to remove the material. For five years, the team has been training and preparing the PUFF facility for the real work that is about to start. Decontamination of cell number one. Cell one is the most contaminated cell. If you look at the PUFF facility as a whole, it holds about 1,500 grams of plutonium-238 and related radionuclides. The vast majority of that is in cell one. So we have to be very careful working in cell one. The submicron size PU-238 is highly mobile. An inhalation of a single eight micrometer particle could result in a worker exceeding the annual allowable dose. To come down and clean up cell one, which is probably one of the most contaminated places on site, it's kind of scary, but yet I have full confidence that we can do it and do it the right way. We've assembled a dream team of workers to perform this material removal. And these workers bring three things with them that are gonna make them successful. One is they're knowledgeable. They're very experienced. They've done this kind of work before. They're intelligent. And then finally, they have a really strong questioning attitude. They are the team that's gonna make this happen and make it a success. Between 7 and 7.15, we'll have a pre-job brief where the first line sits down and he talks to everybody about the work for the day. We cover the procedure, we cover safety, we cover emergencies, we cover the lessons learned. When you work with the same people day in and day out, and you build relationships with those people to your left and your right, and everyone knows their role, and that, that brings about a confidence, uh, inspires confidence throughout the whole team. So we're trying to protect these workers as best as we can while they're inside working. Then we'll wear two pair of uh, coveralls and we'll wear a fresh air hood. Uh, there are going to be some times when we will have to wear a plastic suit. We actually wear three pair of latex gloves. And then you go inside of the cell itself to actually work and you go into some central research gloves. Those are pretty thick. And then based on the product that we're moving around and tools that we're using, then we put on some hex armor gloves. So that's another set of leather gloves. But I, I don't think too much protection is not enough but then there has to be a fine balance about hand dexterity and moving around. And I, and I think we have struck the perfect balance at this point. All decon operations are directed step by step from the remote command center, utilizing the reader worker method, guaranteeing the work plan and procedures are safely followed. The work is divided into two phases for each cell. Uh, the first phase is to remove all the loose materials that are in the cell. Uh, and then to disassemble small things and remove them through loadout locks. The loose equipment and parts are an interference to us doing decontamination in the cells. So there's actually plutonium adhering to those loose parts and materials. So by removing from the cells, we also reach our objective, which is to remove the 238 from the cells. The potential for PU-238 cross-contamination during the bag-out process is elevated. Standardized DOE complex procedures reduces this risk. We have a um, cut that we call, it's a beeline cut. It's a, one that we train them to. RCO surveys the bag. Once the bag's surveyed, we then put it into a, another bag and it's placed into a five-gallon bucket. That bucket is taped up, then it's taken to a storage area. Second phase is to get decon materials in there and start wiping down uh, surfaces. We sweep the floor of the cells or sweep surfaces to remove any loose or visible contamination. Uh, then we'll do a dry wipe down and then finally we have built a special vacuum cleaner 
we'll set it up and they'll start vacuuming the surfaces within the, within the cell. The HEPA vacuum was customized by Savannah River National Laboratory, who has been a crucial partner at every step of the process. For the non-destructive assay, SRNL developed an enhanced characterization methodology that visually pinpoints contamination hotspots. With direct input from the risk reduction team, lab engineers and machinists developed and fabricated one-of-a-kind, lightweight, highly functional glove box tools to improve efficiency and dexterity. And as a final stabilization step for residual contamination, SRNL and Florida International University are investigating flame-proof fixative coatings. DOE fellow STEM students from FIU even observed a cold test and toured the PUP facility as part of the agency's drive to promote next-generation EM workforce development. The 235F risk reduction work is on track for a 2021 completion and final disposition calls for packaging and shipment to the Waste Isolation Pilot Plant in New Mexico, the nation's only deep geological repository for nuclear waste. The objective of this project is to reduce risk associated with the facility. The way to do that is to remove more material at risk. And that will allow the Department of Energy to maintain it long term in a surveillance and maintenance mode, hopefully at a lower expense and much lower risk. Everyone knows their role and that, that brings about a confidence throughout the whole team. We're actually ready to see what the training has afforded us the opportunity to be able to do. We're actually ready to show that we are capable of safely remove this mar. So I think it's a, a sense of excitement, but yet a little bit of humility at the same time, knowing that this responsibility has been given to this small team, but we're ready to do it.